the sky is blue again and I decided to go a little bit for a walk. I have a little bit of a problem in my back. I can't really move my head in the same way as Cheka is doing. But I can still walk in the sun. That's good for me and show you a few things. The rain has left us with this. We added a little bit more material here so that this is not a small lake but has something to soak into. But now it needs to dry out before we can put it in the shape we want to create the grade that we want. And my idea is to take you out to our sediment trap. Yesterday Angel sent me a picture and I think it's worth showing you what we have there. So I'm now outside the farmyard and I'm here on the easement and let's go in that direction and have a look at the sediment trap. You might notice that these swings are now missing. So Angel yesterday removed all of them. We decided to keep the white band because it is in much better shape than these things were. There is a little bit that is fallen. We might roll this up. But in general the idea is let's keep the fence post where we have them set and remove everything else because this will just create more trouble and looks ugly. And I have a feeling we might also pull these fence posts at some point. That should be fairly easy because the ground will be soft and we can avoid this. So instead of losing them, we just store them somewhere. Because we will not do managed grazing in this area for a while. We might fence in certain areas once we plant something, but I don't see any animals here except the horses that we have. And we don't need to do manage grazing with those horses. So here is what I wanted to show you. So this sediment trap filled and it's working as designed. So this should look like this. Of course this is from the rain and uh, the yeah the water that the neighbor has lost and also the sediment because the catchment area has all the parts there on the neighbor's side and it is how it is and here we get to keep it for a while and as you can see everything is starting to green up now that we are officially in autumn. And here, whatever seed is there will germinate and grow. So there is nothing that we really need to do at the moment. And speaking about that, so maybe I should explain something. So long time viewers remember that this whole thing started in yeah in a way to try and learn and do some experiments and we had cattle we had pigs and there was also this idea to create a team of local people i wanted to 
give them an opportunity and together I wanted to create something that does farming in a different way. Of course, I am not a farmer. My profession is something else. And as there was no intention to earn a living by farming, I said, okay, I can use my knowledge in other areas and some goodwill and try to build something that works in a different way and still provides food in the long run. That was the original intention. In combination with my wish to live in a beautiful and nice place. And this area here in Spain is an area where you are in the middle of nowhere, but you are not that far away from a larger city where there is infrastructure and, and other things. So we do have a supermarket. The first one at 25 kilometers and the next one at 50 kilometers. So we don't need to live off the land. So we can develop things at the pace that makes sense, that we like, that we can afford. And of course, I did see that the area is in, is in need of restoration. But of course, restoration is something that you also need to learn. And I'm not afraid of trying new things and learning new things. What I did not anticipate is um, that people who are being provided an opportunity will abuse and cheat. So those things happened. And I keep saying this for a while in, yeah, in a few videos. And that is what happened. And I am not here to be stupid and being abused <laughs> and cheated. So I have stopped this. So there is still some legal proceedings going on. So the former employee who committed fraud um, is, yeah, is being processed by the legal system. So both Angel and I have been caught, uh, called as uh, witnesses and we provided our testimony. And of course, this uh, is going on. Of course, this is the state against this person. There is no personal benefit to be, um, yeah, to be received out of this. The Spanish society does not like that uh, people are committing an act of fraud, so they will process this. At some point, I have no idea and I have no interest either in the outcome of this, but I'm pretty sure that the person will be sentenced and then it is as it is. It does not have to be this way. There was absolutely no need for this person to do what he did. But he did. And of course, as there is someone else involved, the buyer of the cattle, who did not pay a single cent so far, um, I give you a number. We are talking about 13,000 euro. So... That person took the cattle, sold them, made a profit, and then did not pay the invoice because of uh, something that he was talking about with the other guy. Of course, the other guy committed fraud, and the other one simply did not pay an invoice. But the damage is there. So we are lacking those 13,000 euros for the cattle that we sold. And of course, uh, it's not good. <laughs> it's uh, a serious amount. And so, there's also legal proceeding. There is a civil process against that person and company. And once the Spanish legal system gets around, then of course, um, 
That means the person gets an order to pay, and if that does not happen, then we will be allowed to take other measures to get our money. And if the company, that person, has some, some assets to pay, then this uh, will be used. And in the end, the invoice gets paid this way. Again, does not have to be like that. But people decide to do whatever they want, and then they suffer the consequences. I did not intend this. I didn't do anything <laughs> on purpose. So this is just uh, of their own making. And because of things like that, I will not do this anymore. I will not give anyone any chance to work here as an employee. This will not happen again. So, in case there is a need for a worker, yeah, note how I choose my words, if there is a need for a worker, then we will hire someone on a temporary basis for a specific task for a month, two months, three months, maybe six months. And then when the task has been completed, this person is out. The contract ends. So there will be no employment and especially there will be no investment in people anymore. I'm not wasting my time on people who just want to draw a paycheck. Not gonna happen anymore. And that of course also means that some of the things that originally I wanted to do regarding plants and animals will not happen in this way. So there will be no managed grazing where humans control the animal's movement and care for the animals. It makes no sense. So there is not the right type of person around who is willing to do and learn this. And of course, the market does not so not honor the product. So nobody cares how the animal that ends up as meat in the supermarket has lived. The people want to have cheap meat and factory farming does provide it. And the local people, they are struggling to make ends meet and so they want cheap products. And if they are in the position that they have a garden, a vegetable garden, what they call huerto in Spanish, then that's their way of saving. So they don't buy in the supermarket the cheapest vegetables that they can find, they just grow them themselves. And that is cheaper because someone in the family, usually an older person, has the time. So that is their way of uh, getting by. And also they have some animals. They don't need to buy the things in the supermarket. The ones who buy in the supermarket are the ones who work a regular job in a workshop, in an office, in a store, things like that. But the people who have some land in the family, they raise a few animals, sell them and keep some for their own consumption and that's it. Which also means there is no market, there is no local market. This is not next to Barcelona where we could sell high quality products um, from sustainable farming and so on into the big city where people earn a decent bigger salary. Most people here in this area get by on the minimum salary, which is a pay of about 1200 euros, or they even live off what the government provides as unemployment or other types of help. So this is not a 
area that is very prosperous. It is a shame, but this is how it is. And therefore, a lot of the things that we are now doing is to tie up loose ends, fix things, and think about ourselves. And ourselves means my family and uncle's family. They benefit in an indirect way, but um, of course they are part of this. So the idea is to build infrastructure to make sure that my family and I live in a decent home. Our temporary house was to be here. This is not our house and we do need a regular house. So this will be built in combination with a workshop. And of course, all the infrastructure required for that. So we are now homesteading, to put it in this way. And Americans know what homesteading means. Um, so we built a homestead. And the place we have is our farmyard. And that is some 9,000 square meters in size. And we will turn this into a very nice area. And then we will see. And as I'm here, I'm walking around and trying to find a few places that I can show you. So this here is another sediment trap. And it is part of that seasonal creek. And you might have spotted this hose. So this is the water that's being pumped from the outflow of the water reservoir. There is a well, and uh, actually we can now turn this off. Um, that was to fill the other well so that we can irrigate in the farmyard. So right now we are basically moving water from one place to another. It's solar power, so it doesn't really matter if this is running or not. Um, but it's unnecessary. Um, we can turn it off, but on the other hand, the pump is doing something, which is probably good for the pump. But the next opportunity I have that I go there, I will turn this pump off. So that water that you see here is not from the rain. It's a combination, a little bit from the rain, but most is being pumped in here, which is why the other part back there is dry. And here we have this. Now we have this water and it's clean because it's water that comes from the well down there. And here the next piece, uh, the next sediment trap is also full because of all that pumping. When the sun is out, the pump runs. And the water level here in the irrigation pump is probably also now higher. Yeah. How high it is? Let's see. Oh yeah. So the two flotation devices that we left there as a marker, they are now in the water. They are still attached to that rope, so they will not disappear. But then we don't have running water here, so the pumping is only now, because the sun hasn't been out the last few days. So the level that you see here is definitely from the rain. And now that they're here, and I show you the the pond, I can connect the dots in my rambling. So infrastructure, I said. So we will build infrastructure. First the infrastructure in the farmyard, and once an excavator comes, which will be required for the things that we want to build, then of course this excavator will stay a little bit longer and we will use it to enlarge this pond and build another pond and depending on how much money we have available we can also um, make a little bit more holes in the ground for additional water storage or maybe um, dig another swale or something like that just because the machine is here and we can put it to use. But the thing that we will not do is we will not 
plant a lot of things with some altruistic motives. So we will not do this. Eventually we will come back to that. But for the immediate foreseeable future, we shall not go there. We will do things for ourselves that provide a benefit and make our own lives better and easier and nicer, but without doing any harm to anything or anyone. So that means here, let me turn this around. So this continues to be an animal lane and we will maintain it. And the fence to the left will be improved because we get some wild boars who come in here and uproot. And of course this creates a problem. You can see um, this again has been uprooted. And by the way, Angel did a few things to get these uh, cypress trees upright. And you see now that there is water from the sky, how things are progressing here. Those that eventually will not make it, I um, think that one might be a candidate, <laughs> but who knows. Um, we will then replace in spring, that's not a problem. And maybe by then we also have a proper nursery, and then we will do this. And here you can see more activity by wild boars. There is hunting now going on, so this has started. That is why we have them, and they are being kept around, especially in an estate that is 15,000 hectares right next to us. So, therefore, um, they are here. So that means this fence needs to be improved. It will be a fence that prevents those from coming in. And once we have that, then we can do something here on the inside. We can actually loop around here on my little walk in the sun and show you a little bit more. But to finish my thought, so if you're watching this, there's an expectation to see how we restore the land. So yes, we we will restore and continue to restore, but our focus has shifted. And I hope you will understand the reason. And of course, there's also the topic of volunteers. So we had some volunteers here and I'm still very thankful for everybody who showed up. And all of you are invited to come back and continue. So we will also improve the accommodation. So what we had was basically yeah, very rudimentary, but everybody said they did not expect much. So that's uh, okay, and I thank you again for that. But of course we will improve this so that eventually the cortijo will be a nicer place. The only thing that I have to mention is it's a nice place during some parts of the years of the year. So during the very cold part of winter it's going to be very miserable upstairs because there's no insulation. And during the height of summer it's the same because there is no insulation. So there's basically two parts of the year when the cortijo works and we will have the infrastructure in there, specifically the bathroom where we have two showers, um, yeah, be done properly. We have not put a hand onto this so far because other things have priority, but we will. And once that is then nice, then we can host volunteers again. And we will see. It will be a more planned way. So the first time that was just, okay, you can come and we will figure this out. And the next time there will be, let's uh, say, a program. So we will have a well-defined project 
and we will say how long you need to be here and what it is that we want to do and so on but also of course the infrastructure will be there so that we can do this so there's a give and take so this is not a thing that we will forget and stop no no but in terms of what you will see here in these videos for the foreseeable future all this will be farmyard and the infrastructure that we have out here we will remove this so what you see right now this will be gone very soon because once there is no need for irrigation we will store this we will use this for something else so especially the valves we will use in the farmyard for something else and also the controller that's on the back and also the Wi-Fi access point and the two cameras, they will be used for something in the farmyard. And later on, when we come back to this area, it will be to plant Polovnia trees, but in, yeah, in a different way. And the irrigation bits and pieces, they will also come out again, but we will store all this and leave this area with this boost of biomass to recover and prepare itself for what we eventually want to do here. But then I have also to say that this is quite far away from the farmyard. You see the farmyard over there and there's an area between where I am and the actual farmyard. We call this A17 and that area will come first. So those cypress trees, and of course their replacements, um, they are okay, they are needed because we needed a wind break, we learned this. And I'm so thankful that we did not jump ahead and planted cypress trees here, that would have been a mistake. Uh, cypress, I mean Polovnia trees. So what we will do when we continue to do some plant stuff, we will plant something right next to the farmyard and this is too far out so the idea is to use this permaculture concept of zones so you work in one zone first and then you move on to the adjacent zone and that means um the area over there on the other side of the easement and not here which is too far out. And once this area is nice and a working system, then we can do more things out here. So I think that is pretty important. And it is to put lessons learned to use. So keep in mind, I am a software guy. I develop software or help people develop software. I am not a farmer. I have no education in farming. My only connection to farming is that I helped my dad a long time ago in the garden. <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> but I understand complexity and I can process information in, yeah, in a good way, to put it this way. I'm not especially smart. <laughs> I make a lot of mistakes like everybody else. But I think I can learn from these mistakes and that is what happening. Yeah, so everything that went wrong was a learning opportunity and that's what I'm trying to convey. So we have learned a few things, Uncle and I, and we have now created a list of things of what not to do, not to repeat. And now we are adhering to, to this. So that means we will focus on things that are truly important and create a solid foundation for whatever we then want to do. So now that we know what works and what does not, this should then work in a better way. And as I mentioned people, so we now live in a world 
where automation can do a lot of things. And being a software guy, <laughs> I am a little bit closer to these things than others, maybe. So I'm not saying, oh, we will use humanoid robots next year. No, <laughs> we will not, because they're not ready. But they do exist. And these things are making great progress. And I think before I leave this uh, planet, because I'm too old to be around, we will live in a world where these humanoid robots will will be out there in public and do things. So maybe some of you have seen an event by an American company called Tesla. They showed how the future could look like, and they had about 20 humanoid robots. So this is how the future probably very soon will look like. And yeah, um, everybody who has a bad attitude <laughs> will find themselves in a very tight spot. Experiences provide learning opportunities. So hopefully the people I refer to will get the message and change their attitude. Would be a shame. I'm pretty sure none of you watching this is part of that group, but unfortunately they are around. And I have seen them in many different places, but I shall not go any further in that direction. There is a reason that everybody has some background story, as sad as it might be. So, but it is a different topic. So, no. I am not saying let's replace humans with robots, but eventually those things will appear and then we will see. It doesn't matter if it's in five or in 20 years, they, they, will, they will be around. So what does it mean? So right now automation is the thing, not only irrigation, but also other things. Of course, I need to learn a few things in order to pull this off, and that is what I'm after. So I am educating myself. I am learning how to do more sophisticated education, uh, automation. So it's a combination of my software background, and I'm learning about electronics and electric. So like this, also this is a failed attempt, but the failed part is those solenoid valves for some reason, they, don't, uh, they do not work the way they were supposed to. They might have been broken on arrival, could be. I ordered them on Amazon from China and maybe that was a mistake. So I should try with a different source. Up here, that is okay. So there is a relay uh, here, you can see it if I go in there, this cable gets in the way. Okay, so there maybe you can see this. So this would work. And on the bench, it did something. It did the right thing on the bench. So this is the stuff that I'm trying to learn and until also. And eventually we can use all this. Yeah, we can then use all this and automate other things that are not irrigation. So we can open doors, we can use sensors. So imagine, to give you an example, what I'm up to, imagine we introduce pigs again and we want to feed them. But we want to feed them the right amount and I do not want to create work for myself. I already have work to do. So instead of moving bags, and feeding the pigs every day, like a pig farmer used to do, I want this to be automated. So I am envisioning a system where the pig can be identified by an RFID chip. They are already being used for animals, for animal tracking. Horses do have some of these, dogs and other pets also. So it's nothing new. and. There is a gate and at the entrance of a scale to figure out how much weight they have today. Um, there is a gate, a door, 
and this opens depending on which animal it is and then the animal steps onto the scale the weight gets recorded and then the other side of the scale opens and the animal gets to feed and maybe the right amount could be there are many things that we can do and I would love to learn more about this and to build it. Of course, some of the bits and pieces can already be bought. They are available commercially, but where's the fun? And then the idea is not to set up a kafu, a commercial animal feeding operation. So that's not what I want. I want this to work in a nice way. And nice, of course, requires a definition, but it means it is sustainable and I'm not mistreating or exploiting the animals. Well, I am exploiting a little bit, but uh, that also happens when I cut off a salad. So that's okay, but I don't have to treat them badly. And then all this automation is then put to good use. So that is the future that I'm thinking about. And everybody who is interested and has knowledge and skills in this area is invited, is invited to comment, to contribute, or maybe physically show up here. So we might end up being a community of like-minded people working on farm electronics, farm automation, and build things that allow ecosystem restoration in a nice way with animals instead of just volunteers planting trees. Could be. We will see. So I wanted to walk around and share a little bit of these thoughts and also allow you to see what the rain did for us. More is certainly on its way because we have now entered the rainy part of the year. It's not a rainy season, but you could call it this way. It definitely rains quite a bit during autumn, winter and also spring, but not in summer.